In this video, I'm gonna share with you guys my top five Pokemon card flips from April, 2024. Before we jump in, I wanna remind you that the market can move quickly and aggressively. Just because these flips work for me in April, 2024, does not mean that they will work at whatever time you are watching this. Make sure to do your own research before making any purchases. This month, I sold 62 Pokemon cards for a gross sales amount of $6,643. That left us a total profit amount of $1,744 impact mostly by modern Charizards, two in particular, the PSA 10 25th Anniversary Charizard and the PSA 10 Shiny Charizard V from Shiny Star V. I sold nine copies of each of these Charizards, but let's break them down individually. Many of you know that the Japanese 25th Anniversary Charizard was a play that I was making at the end of last year. Month after month, that play started looking worse and worse, and I was just elbow deep in these cards. I bought so many copies at the beginning of the year, and the prices dropped dramatically between January and April. One thing that really helped me out with this particular purchase is that when I was buying them, they were selling for around $250. So I was able to send almost every copy that I bought to the vault because at the time, the market price of that card was around the $250 threshold for selling the cards through the vault for the 0% fees. Now, after the last few months, that sales price went down and down and down and I adjusted those prices lower and lower and lower until I finally fire sold the rest of the 25th anniversary charge that I had in the vault for $170 a piece. So like I said, this month I sold nine copies of the 25th anniversary Charizard. My average buy-in price for each copy was $119.30. My average sales price per copy was $181.42. Most of them were sold through the vault. Some of them were sold individually through my own account. But after fees and when all is said and told, I had a $35.26 average profit per card. That is a 26.2% average profit margin percentage. As a person who's going to be targeting higher price singles and utilizing the vault to be able to sell those cards with 0% fees, it really sucks that they recently announced the changes and the vault will no longer be beneficial for my business. Next up is the Shiny Charizard V from Shiny Star V. This is one of obviously the two biggest hits from that set. You had the Shiny Charizard V and you had the Shiny Charizard V Max. One thing interesting about the two cards is you can get the Shiny Charizard V significantly cheaper than the VMAX, but it sells for nearly as much as the VMAX does, providing a unique opportunity for a pretty decent profit margin percentage. Just like with the 25th anniversary Charizard, I sold nine copies of the shiny Charizard V this month. My average buy-in price was $46.56, with my average sell price $110.05. That means after fees and everything's taken out, my average profit per card was $31.34, that is a 50.9% average profit margin percentage, nearly twice the average profit margin percentage as the 25th anniversary Charizards. I mentioned it in a recent video talking with Ernie about the current state of the Japanese market, but for me, I'm not currently buying Japanese modern cards unless I get a decent coupon from Baiyi. Usually a 15 to 20%, I will go all in and I'll start buying a bunch of singles. But without that coupon, there's less of a cushion for me to be able to weather a price drop. If there's a 20% price drop in the two to three months that it takes for me to get that card in, grade that card and sell that card, I can buffer myself a little bit with a coupon. If I don't have a coupon, then I am eating that cost straight up. So usually I'm not buying modern Japanese hit cards without that nice little buffer of a nice little buy coupon. The number four top flip of the month was a PSA 10 Darkrai Hollow from the Japanese set Shining Darkness. This card has a population of only 35 PSA 10s. That is wild given that this set came out in 2007. A couple of metrics that I'm going to give you for the four, three, two, and one top flips of the month are when I graded them because I want you you guys to realize how long it can take for some of these cards to sell and I'm going to tell you guys the last sold auction price in comparison to my sold buy it now price. The trend that you're gonna see is it takes a lot more patience to sell these cards to get these types of returns as opposed to the ultra modern cards that you can quickly flip in a week once you get them back from PSA. These cards hang around a lot longer, but if you wanna realize the maximum profit from each of the cards, you gotta sit on them and you gotta be a little patient before you're gonna get that sale. So this Dark Cry was graded on December 21st, 2023. That's about four months ago and about four months it took for me to list and then have that card actually sell 
at the price that it sold for. Now, at the time, I bought the card for $18.24. Obviously, it's $15 right now with PSA to grade. So that's a total cost all in for $33.24. I sold the Darkrai for $110. And after fees and everything, my profit at the end of the sale, $61.12. That is a profit margin percentage of about 184%. I sold this card for $110 by it now. The last sold auction price for this card is $79.20. Obviously, I still would have made a margin on that auction sale, but I would have made a lot less of a margin than I did waiting to sell it by it now for $110. This is another calculation that you should be thinking about when you're getting cards back and you're putting them up for sale. What's the optimal profit margin percentage? How patient do you actually want to be? How fast do you want to move these cards? There are people that will move all of the cards the month that they get them in, no matter if they auction them, no matter if they bin them, and they will eat whatever losses they have so that they can continue to put those profits or that money into new opportunities. I am much more of a laid back patient seller, I guess. It's okay for me to sit on a card for six months before it sells at the highest profit margin that I can get for that card at that time. Well, some people like to hustle. They like to keep it moving. And ultimately, if you're going to be doing that, you're probably not even going to be buying these types of cards in the first place if you're really trying to sell things quickly. Because as you can see, if you choose to sell cards like these quickly, you're gonna make a lot less money. The number three top flip of the month is a PSA 10 Charizard Hollow from the black and white set Freeze Bolt. This card has a population of 92 in PSA 10 and it was graded on August 10th, 2023. So by the time I got it back from PSA and put it up on eBay, it had been around on my store for nine months before someone came by and bought it. For this copy of the Freeze Bolt Charizard, I spent $17.69, $15 to grade. That means I'm all in for $32.69. Fairly comparable, actually, to what I spent on the dark ride. I sold this card for $132.99. And after all the fees are said and done, I profited about $77.68 for a profit margin percentage of 238%. One important thing to think about when you're selling Pokemon cards is obviously demand. Now I'm showing you guys the population of particular cards in particular grades on PSA's website. And the pop report is a very interesting tool to use occasionally, but it doesn't really account for demand. Let me show you why. This Charizard came out in 2012 in the set Freeze Bolt. This card has been around for 12 years to be graded and only 92 of them are currently in the PSA pop report as a PSA 10. A Charizard, one of the most popular Pokemon of all time, only 92 in the pop report is selling for $132. That's crazy, right? It's crazy when you compare those numbers to the Umbreon VMAX from Evolving Skies. There are 11,000 of these graded in PSA 10, and it's right now selling for over $1,000 in a PSA 10. The difference, hype, and demand. The number two top flip of last month was a PSA 10 Dark Amphros from the set Rocket Gang Strikes Back, the Japanese equivalent to Team Rocket Returns. That set came out in 2004, so this card is basically 20 years old. This card has a population of 78 in PSA 10. Not crazy surprising given that it is an Amphros. It's not one of the big EXs from the set or one of the super popular Pokemon from the set, but Amphros is a fairly popular Pokemon in its own right. This dark Amphros was particularly beautiful because it had a fat swirl right next to the head on the card. It was impeccable. I am a sucker for swirls. I have seen many people walking around conventions specifically looking for swirls. Swirls do drive up the interest, if not the price, on a lot of cards. So if you have the opportunity to buy two mint copies, one has a swirl and one doesn't, paying up a little bit for that swirl, honestly, could pay off in the long run. This card was graded on January 29th, 2024, so it was only around a couple of months before it sold. It doesn't happen too often with these mid-era cards, but if I can move those cards two months after they come back from PSA, that is the sweet spot. This card was surprisingly purchased for only $10.21, so after $15 grading, $25.21 all in. I ended up selling the card for $162. And after fees and everything were taken out by eBay, I profited $111.74 on that one card, giving me a crazy profit margin percentage of 443%. A flip like this is exactly what I'm looking for. Finding a 20 year old card of a fairly popular Pokemon with a swirl posted 
at a fairly low price, like this one, $10.21 from a set like Team Rocket Returns, there was no way I was going to pass that up. And thankfully, PSA gave it to 10 for that fat profit margin percentage. There's a pretty significant difference on this one as well for the last sold auction. The last sold auction of this card was $118.50. And I obviously was able to sell it by now in two months, which is awesome, for $162. So about $44 difference between the last sold auction and my buy it now sale. Now, once again, I still would have made a really good margin if I had auctioned that card and gotten that auction price. But because I was chill and patient for a couple months, I was able to make even more. So you just have to figure out that timeline, that sweet spot that works for you. Last but not least, the number one flip of the month was a PSA 10 Scyther card from Galactic's Conquest. This card was another surprise. I didn't necessarily think it would get a PSA 10. It was pretty clean in comparison to the Hitmonchan that I also sent out from the same set, but it snagged the 10 and then it sat for a long time, and we're gonna talk about that in a second. This card has a population of 45, so pretty low pop given that Galactic's Conquest came out in 2009. I was able to pick up this card for $19.72, which is a crazy buy-in price for that card in that condition. $15 to grade for $34.72 all in. That is my all in cost for that card. Coming back from PSA, it did get the PSA 10. Thank you, PSA. I was able to then sell the card for $189.99. That means after fees, my profit was $128.94 with that sweet profit margin percentage of 371.4%. Now, I mentioned that this card sat for a while. I got this card back from PSA June 5th, 2023. So that means after I got it back from PSA, it sat on my eBay for 11 months before it finally sold. That's a pretty long time to hold a card if you're flipping. The last sold auction of this card in a PSA 10 was $142.50, which really isn't that bad. And with the $19 buy-in, I still would have done very well auctioning this card for $142. And maybe that would have been worth it instead of waiting 11 months for 40 more dollars, essentially. It's all just a time value proposition. So that is it. Those were my top five flips of April, 2024. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments below and please hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps me out. I hope you all had amazing sales in April.